Hello, my name's Amanda and welcome to the next tutorial in my House Square Triangle Sampler Quilt Along series. So in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to piece together our backing, how to baste our quilt together and then essentially quilt it in the way that I have as you can see in the background in like a crisscross grid like pattern. So for the backing you'll need at least three meters plus a little bit more if you're using yards of fabric. I'm using just a basic solid for my backing because it's a cheaper option because I'm making this quilt on a budget and I like using a solid for the background because the quilting can stand out and all that sort of stuff. So this is just a normal width fabric that you usually get off the bolt. I think it's about 40 inches in Australia. It's 112 centimeters and like I said you will need three meters because we're going to fold it in half, cut it in half and then sew the selvages together to create a nice big backing to put on the back of our quilt. So for the batting you will need at least 1.5 meters plus a little bit extra if you're working in yards again. I think the width of mine is a little over two meters so I will definitely have enough for another project. The batting that I chose to use is this beautiful one that I am absolutely loving at the moment. It's by Legacy and it is a bamboo cotton blend. Now when I took a photo of this on Instagram I had a question of why do you prefer bamboo? Well I like bamboo because it is so soft and luscious and luxurious and it is such a dream to sew through the sewing machine. I find that it's really lightweight and really easy to use and I also just find that the colour of it isn't as sort of creamy as a 100% cotton batting which means that I can put this on the back of say like a white solid and not sort of dull the colour. It'll just sort of keep everything nice and bright and crisp and lovely. So to baste my quilt I'm using a method that works best for me and that is spray based. This is the can that I use, it's from Birch, I buy this at Spotlight. I just find using spray is a lot quicker than doing pins or stitching or any other way that there is to baste a quilt. This just works best for me because I hate basting, it's one of my least favourite steps of quilt making and any way that I can make it as quick and as painless as possible this is it. Well, this is the quickest way that I found that works best for me. Now, of course, you don't have to do a spray basting for your quilt. You can do whatever method that works best for you. You can do pins, you can do board basting, you can stitch it, you can do whatever works for you. You don't have to do it the way that I'm doing it. But if you are going to do a spray base, just make sure that where you're spraying is well ventilated. Try and do it outside if you can. But if you have to do it inside, just make sure you've got all your doors open, all your windows, and just, yeah, there's just lots of air flowing through because because it's, it can be quite harmful if you sort of go a little bit overboard. So when it comes around to the quilting part of the tutorial, there is actually a level of assumed knowledge that I've sort of gone into when I've edited the video and the way that I've sort of spoken about it and all that sort of stuff. So there, I am sort of assuming that you do have experience in quilting and the way that you sort of set up your space and the way that you use your machine and quilt a quilt through your machine. If you do want to see a little bit more of the way that I sort of set up my space and some tips and tricks and stuff like that, there is a blog post that I wrote about it during my last quilt along series and there is also a link to the video tutorial that I did for that section of my last quilt along as well. I'm just aware of the fact that I don't really want to be rehashing the same information over and over and over again so I hope that you're okay with that and if you do need extra help just please comment below and I will definitely definitely help you out. So when it does come to quilting your quilt you don't have to do it the way that I have. By all means you can if you really want to but you know be creative do it the way that you feel most comfortable you can just do a couple of lines you can ditch stitch it you can stipple it you can free motion quilt it you can do whatever you want whatever works whatever you think would look best on your quilt. So I think I've gone through everything that I think I need to before we get this tutorial underway. I really do think that this step in the quilt making process is very open. You can choose to do these steps in any way that you choose. You don't have to do it the way that I'm doing. This part's merely just sort of like a guide or inspiration or just sort of information on what to do after you've done your quilt top. So hopefully it helps. So enough of my rambling, here are the next couple of steps in how to finish our quilt in this series. So to prepare the backing, open up the fabric and fold it in half lengthways. Then, using fabric scissors, cut it in half along the folded edge widthways. Line up the two of the selvage edges from each half and then pin them together. 
at the sewing machine, sew a quarter inch line in from the selvage edge all the way along the length of the fabric. This will ensure that you'll be able to cut the entire width of the selvage edge off in the next step. Next, using a ruler and blade, place the quarter inch line on your ruler on top of the stitched seam and trim away the selvage from the entire edge. Then with a hot steamy iron, press the seam open and then give the entire backing piece a good press to smooth out any wrinkles. To begin the basting process, first evenly lay out the batting and then the quilt top. Take your time ensuring that both layers are nice and smooth and then with fabric scissors cut off the excess batting from around the quilt top, leaving a good 3 or 4 inches of overhang. Gently place this to one side and then lay out the backing wrong side facing up. Patiently lay the batting and quilt top layers onto the backing, keeping as close to its bottom edge as possible. Then cut off the excess backing fabric from the top. Next, slowly roll back the quilt top to about the middle and then followed by the batting. Generously spray on the basting spray starting in the middle and making your way down to the bottom edge going from left to right. Once the adhesive feels tacky, gently roll the batting layer back into place, smoothing it down with your hand, starting from the middle and working your way out to the edges. Then spray again on top of the batting layer in the same way as before. Roll the quilt top back into place and smooth the surface down with your hand. And then from here, repeat the same set of steps to baste the other half of the quilt. Finally, give the top of the basted quilt a gentle press with a medium to hot steamy iron, starting in the centre and working your way out to the edges to set the layers into place. So to quilt my quilt, I'll be using two matching 100% cotton Gudeman threads as well as my Clover Hera marker to mark the quilting lines. But before doing that, I like to set up my sewing machine ready for quilting. To do this, I first patiently attach my walking foot to my machine and then thread it with the green thread on top and the pink thread in the bobbin. Next, I decide on the stitch length I would like to use. To do this, I take an off cut of the backing, the batting and the background fabric and sandwich them together. And then playing around with the stitch length on my machine, I sew a few lines at different lengths to see what I like best. The first line is a stitch length of 3.5 with the second at 4.5. For this quilt I've chosen to use a stitch length of 3.5. For my quilt I've chosen to quilt an all over crisscross grid like pattern marked at 3 inches apart. There are two ways you can mark your quilt up to achieve a successful result. The first is to take a ruler and hair a marker and mark little notches along each edge of the quilt top at 3 inches. Then with the ruler as a guide, line up each opposite notch and mark your quilting lines along the entire quilt top. Alternatively, you can do it the way I'll be doing it by firstly marking two lines through the centre of the quilt resulting in a large centre crisscross. I then carefully follow these lines as I'm quilting on the machine, anchoring the quilt into place and eliminating any chances of the quilt top moving or puckering during the rest of the quilting process. Once I've quilted both of these lines, I choose a side and mark three more lines at a time at three inches apart, using my center quilted line as a guide. And then from here, I continue to quilt and mark my lines until the whole quilt has been quilted with the pattern that I wanted.
So you might have noticed in the last couple of clips of when I was quilting that I had one of these on my walking foot. This is called a guide bar and I put this on my walking foot when I'm doing particularly straight line quilting and I just find that when I'm doing quilting like I have on this quilt where all of the lines are sort of measured at three inches or two and a half inches or four inches that it really helps to keep me on track and to make everything nice and straight and lovely. It's just sort of like an extra helping hand that I'm able to use to make sure all of my lines are correctly spaced and straight and all that sort of stuff. So now that we have our quilt backed, basted and quilted, it is time to do the binding and that's what I'll be doing in the next tutorial which will also be the last one in the series. I'll also show you how to label it as well and it will be done. We'll have a nice lovely half square triangle sampler quilt to love and cherish or gift or what are you going to do with it? So I really do hope that this tutorial has been helpful for you and I cannot wait to see how you all quilt your quilts and how they all turn out. I'm just ah, so excited. Like I mentioned before, if you have any questions about any of the steps in this tutorial, then please comment below and I will try my very, very best to help you out and answer any questions that you have. Don't forget to keep sharing your blocks and your quilt tops and your quilting process with me on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook and everywhere else that I am that you can share things with. All of the links are always down below. And until our next tutorial, which is the last one in the series, thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you another time very, very soon. Bye! So now that we have all nine blocks in the series made, it's now time to sash them all together, put a border all around them to complete our quilt top, which you can see here in the background behind me. And doesn't it look awesome? Oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs>